In the previous video, we moved on to the last building block that we're going to work on before we enter classes. So now we are pretty much ready to start, and I'll try to give a rough explanation of a way to view classes if it's something you're not familiar with, because that is what heavily drives object-oriented programming. It's just, you can think of classes as objects. So for example, when I ever come over here and I hit play, this guy right here is a class. He's, well, on Unreal Engine terms, he's an actor, he's a character. But he is ultimately coming from a class. It's an object. And that class contains several different things, so it takes whatever it's derived from, from a character, then a actor, or a pawn, whatever, yada yada yada. But it contains a bunch of information that it that class should have or that object should have so i want to have a bunch of different information i want it to have you know the mesh i want it to have a camera i want it to have know which weapon to spawn when it starts i want to know what current weapon that character has and just all of this other stuff and functionality i want to be known to that class so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be writing something simple. We're just going to do a basic person class and we're going to get some basic information. You know, we're going to enter in age, name, and honestly, that's probably going to be it. And then we're just going to add some functionality. We're just going to do some basic setters and getters for the functions. We're going to be discussing private, protected, and public uh, sections. I don't know what they're actually called. And then we're going to go into deriving classes from other classes. So things that would kind of make sense. So for example, it makes sense to derive my character class, a character base, from the base class, ace character, that Unreal Engine already provides. So to begin, we're going to do the exact same thing, like here, except we are going to do this inside of another file. So we're going to keep it nice and neat that way. So what we're going to do is on our header files, we're going to right click, add class and let's call this class person and press OK and here we have the person.h and the person.cpp and the person.cpp just simply includes person.h so now we need to know what information we're going to need to have <clears throat> so I know I want a couple of things I want to store the age so I want to do int age. I want to have the name. So I want to do a const char pointer, which is, think of it like a C string. Well, a string from C. And let's do name. And that's going to be it. So let's work on the constructor real quick to set these values to default values. So in order to do a constructor, you just do the name of the class, opening and closing parenthesis. And I want to make the constructor, I just always do this out of habit, public. And then I'm going to do protected because I want age and name to be protected. And I will explain what those are here in a second. So let's go ahead and create the person constructor. You can press alt enter and create the implementation. So in here, we're going to do age equals 18 by default, and name equals name, I guess, and that'll be good for now. So now what I want to do is I want to create a public function, well, public functions that allow me to set the age and the name because they are not accessible because they are protected. Let's do public. Let's do void set age. And it's going to take in a parameter of the type integer. So int new age. And we're going to do void set name. It's going to take in a const char pointer. New name. So same thing. Generate the implementation for both. And for set age, we're just going to do age equals new age. And name equals 
new name. So now we also want to make some getter functions to get these values. So int get age. And what I normally do is just right in here, I just make it return age. If it's just a simple line like that, I do that all in one line. So now const char pointer get name return name like so. Now we have our setters and our getters. And now we can actually begin on creating the actual class object. So in our normal, our initial .cpp, we're going to include person. So include person.h. <clears throat> now we want to create a person object. Now the way you do that, you can think of person as a normal variable. So think of it like an integer, for example. So you do the same thing, person. And let's do just person in lower cases, like so. So by default, what we can do here is let's do person age. We're going to do person dot get age. And let's just end the line. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. So this should print out 18, the default value that we set right here. Because we are calling our public get age functions, our get age function. So we use the dot operator to access whatever we have inside of the person object. So here you can see those four public functions that I created earlier. So if I were to do person dot set age and pass in 44, now when I run it, person age is now 44 because we call it set age and set age set age to whatever value we passed into it. So it gathered the new information. So now I want to make this set up so a part like a user can enter in their age. So we're just going to do printout enter age. We're going to do std send just like before. Get rid of that out of the way. Person dot. Oh, actually, I don't know if we can do it directly that way. So int temp age. So we're going to store the input into temp age. And then we're just going to do person dot set age temp age, like so. So now let's run it. Enter age, let's do 56. Person age, 56. So we passed in our value into set age. So we set this person to have an age of 56. Now let's do the name. So enter name. And here we have to do this one a little differently. So we're going to do what well, we want to include string. I want to move it above person.h. And we have to do std get line, std sin. And then we want to pass in the second parameter. So const char pointer temp name. temp name, like so. And what am I missing here? Does it have to be a string? CD string. Okay, so it has to be a string then. So we're gonna do std string temp name. And then we're gonna pass in temp name as the second parameter to get line. So now we're gonna do person dot set name, temp name. However, you'll notice it has an error because we got to convert it from a string to a constant char pointer. So what we can do is dot c string, like so, and that will convert it. Now this dot c string, well, c, c underscore str is a function that we are calling inside of the string itself. So we're calling a function that somebody has written, just like we are calling a function that we wrote to set the name. So, 
Let me copy and paste this one. So we're gonna do person name and get name, like so. So now we should hopefully be able to see both. So age, 15. Oops. Let's see what I miss out here. Hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. Let me look up get line real quick. I'm using it the same way. I'm almost questioning if there's just something in the buffer then. Well, that would be my assumption. So if we move this first, it should be just fine. So we're going to do the name first. Uh, let's do Johnny, age 66. And there we go. So now it prints out age 66 and Johnny for the name. So we have our class, we have our basic getters, and our setters for all the variables that we want. Now we could access these directly if this was just public. So like this for example, and then we could do person dot, now you can see age and name are both right there. But generally, you want to have getters and setters. You don't want to have just everything be public. So I'm going to change this back to protected. So now let's move on to what protected actually kind of does. And same thing goes for private. And to do that, we're going to create a class derived from this class. So I'm going to right-click on header files, add another class. Let's do class name, employee. In the base class, we're going to choose person. So press OK. Let me just clean it up a bit. And open the .cpp. And we're going to create a constructor just like before. So public section. Employee, opening and closing brackets, generate the implementation, and we are good to go. So now, let's create an employee object instead of a person object. So I'm going to include employee.h instead of person.h, but as you can see, person is still valid. This still works the same as shown there but let's change it to employee. And now if I run it, it's the exact same thing. Like so. Now, why is that? Well, that's because certain sections are set to protected. The two key things here, the age and the name. Now, if I was to set this to private, It should still work, however, that's because we have getters. But if we come over here, let's do age equals 30, we have an error. As you can see here, it's showing person age declared at line 13 is inaccessible. Now, that is because we set age to be private. So age and name are private to person, this person class. They are not known to employee. So employee cannot access age and name directly. However, we have these setter and getter functions inside of the person class that sets and gets those variables for us. So we don't need to do anything else. Those functions are already there. So we can just extend the functionality of person just by adding whatever functionality we want in here. So if I change this to protected, 
and then look, that error goes away. Because we can access age, and we can access name. And that's the beauty of protected. So it carries over to the next class that inherits from the class that it's on. So let's change this back to private, and we're going to add some new information to employee. So we're going to do a private section, and let's give it a new name, or actually better yet, let's do int days worked. Let's create a public section, void set days worked, take in a value, days, or new days worked. And let's do a getter, so int get days worked, return days worked. Create the implementation for set days worked. We're going to do days worked equals new days worked. And by default, set days worked to zero in the constructor. So now we have this extra functionality right here inside of the employee. So what we can do is come down here I'm just going to change this from temp age to temp value so I can just reuse it and have it make more sense. But what we're going to do is person dot set days worked. We now have this new functionality right here. So set days worked temp value. I'm just going to do another enter, but enter days worked, like so, and we're going to set it. And now let's get the days worked. Let's use that getter, so dot get days worked, and we are done. So name, Johnny, age 26, and our days worked. Now it prints out 26, Johnny, and 8. All the information we set because they are inside of the class, specifically our employee class. So if I change this back to person, it will quit working with the new information such as set days worked and get days worked because those are specific to the employee class. But everything else will work just fine until we revert back to employee, in which case everything is good to go. So like I said, uh, classes can be thought of as objects that contain information and have functionality already built into them, such as setting the age, setting the name, or in my case for like weapons and stuff like that, shooting, uh, setting the delay of the fire rate, and you know all whatever else is in here is the functionality of that weapon class so that's a basic rundown of classes so up, up next in the next video we are going to move on to structures and to sum it up structures are the exact same thing however we have classes in c plus plus so classes and structures are used differently for the most part and structures are generally used to contain data so we will move on to that next. So I will see you then. As always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, a link to my Patreon's in the des yeah, description. And if you have any questions or anything like that, you can also find a link to my Discord down below as well. So I will see you in the next one. Take care.